Hello, everybody, and welcome to the STEM at Home presentation. I'm Elle Wynn. And I'm Riley Marks, and we are from Oregon State University's club, Girls Empowerment, Engineering, and Outreach. Yep, and today we are going to be talking about mint and temperature. Hello, everybody. My name is Riley Marks. I am a second year chemical engineering major in the Honors College at Oregon State. I have two wonderful pets, my Border Collie Ruby and my Siamese Lily. And in the future, I would love to go into renewable energy and sustainability and take care of the planet that we know and love. Hello again, I'm Elle. I am a first year bioengineering major in the Honors College here at Oregon State. I have played the piano for 13 years, one of my favorite things to do. And after I graduate from here, I would love to go into medical research. So today we're here to talk about mint and temperature. If you've ever had a piece of gum or maybe a peppermint and then drank a big glass of water, it probably felt really, really cold. So we're here to see if mints change the temperature of your water, change the temperature of your mouth, or if it's just some weird thing that goes on. So before we get started, we wanna to talk to you a little bit about the scientific method. So the scientific method is something that scientists like you use to answer the questions that they have about the environment that goes on around us. So it all starts with an observation that scientists make and they have questions about it. So like mint, temperature, water, what's going on there? And it all starts with some background knowledge. Everything that you know about mints, water, thermometers, this is your background. This is the information that you already know, you already have, and you're here to learn more about it. So from your background information, you can create your own hypothesis. Your hypothesis is what you think the answer to the question is going to be and what you're going to answer with your experiment. Now an experiment is what you do to make the answer to your hypothesis. What we're gonna do here today is test some water, find the temperatures of it and see if mints are gonna change the temperature of the water. After we run our experiment, well, and while we're running our experiment, we're going to do some data collection. So as we're testing the temperature of our water, we're going to write that down. And we're also gonna record how much time we've elapsed. That way we can figure out what our data means in the next step of data analysis. Data analysis is the step where we take all the information we got from our experiment and really look at it and figure out whether the mints change the temperature of our water or not. Finally, after we've analyzed our data, we're going to conclude our experiment and determine whether our hypothesis was correct or incorrect. So before we start the experiment, we want each of you to form your own hypothesis. We have one written up here that you can base it off of. You can choose if you think mint does change the temperature of our mouths, or if you think that mint does not change the temperature of our mouths and something else could be to blame. So why don't you take a couple minutes and think about what you would like your hypothesis to be. All right, so now that you have a hypothesis, let's get started. All right, we're going to start our investigation. I'm going to stop sharing the presentation so you can see Riley. I do need the materials list, though. That is right. I will put the materials back up. <laughs> Perfect. OK, so here's what you're going to need for your experiment. You're going to start with two small cups of water, preferably the same kind of cup, the same size of cup. Your nice little pitcher with warm water that you're going to add to your cups. Now, it's important to note that the thermometers I'm using here today and the thermometers that most people have in their houses are meant for measuring your internal body temperature. So the thermometers that I have can only measure liquids between 90 and 110 degrees Fahrenheit. So you want your water to be warmer than room temperature, but definitely not boiling. We're also gonna need your favorite kind of mints. I've brought Mentos here with me today. You're gonna want one or two thermometers. I have taped them to the inside of my glasses just so that they're easier to read. And you're also gonna want a paper and pencil to take notes. And I have this nifty little board back here we're gonna to use to analyze our data. So why don't you all gather your materials. All right, so after all of your materials are gathered, we can start our experiment. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is fill both of your cups with your warm water. Oh, cup set up 
you. Now you're gonna, gonna wanna fill your cups with about the same amount of water, just so that we have as few differences between the cups as possible. Now, as soon as you drop one, two, however many mints you want into your glass, our experiment is going to begin. I'm gonna put my mints into the cup with the green thermometer, and we're gonna take the initial temperature of both of our liquids. All right, so our control water is at 90.8 degrees Fahrenheit. And our experimental water is at 90.2. And we're gonna measure the temperature of our water every 30 seconds until we get down to 120 seconds, just so that we can compare how the water changes as time goes on. So I've set my nifty little timer up here. And we're gonna keep recording our data as the experiment goes along. Reset our thermometers. All right, so our control water here is at 90.6 degrees Fahrenheit, and our experimental water is at 90.2. We're gonna keep our timer going. Now what's important about having a control is that you can compare other variables. As our experiment began, our water is at two different temperatures. So as it goes on, they might also be at two different temperatures. But all we want to change here is whether or not the water has mint in it. Let's reset them and take our one minute mark. All right, our control is at 90.5 degrees and our experiment is at 90.1. When you're doing an experiment, you only want one variable to be different. And in this case, it's the mint. In um, both your control and your experiment, the temperature is going down, but we don't know if that's due to the mint or due to other factors, such as the temperature of the air in your room, um, how hot the water was when it came out of your sink, stuff like that. So we wanna make sure that if the water is changing, it is because of the mint and not because of anything else. Let's reset our thermometers. All right, now the control is at 90.3 and our experimental is at 90.0. And then we'll just take it one more time at the end after another 30 seconds. Okay, and finally our control ended at 90.2 degrees and our experiment ended at 90.0 degrees. Now, if you're looking at this chart, it's very clear that the numbers are pretty similar, but they are not the same. Overall, our experimental cup of water only changed by about 0.2 degrees Fahrenheit, and the control changed by 0.6 degrees. The experiment changed less than the control did, but that's what the control is here for, is just to see what's going on. So let's take a look at what this means and what other variables could be that take into account with our experiment. Okay, so what does this mean? Our data table over here shows that the control and the experiment are changing. They're changing at relatively the same rate. So we can assume that the mint doesn't really have an impact over whether or not the water changes, but there is something that's changing the temperature of our water. So what do you think that could be? So there are other areas we can investigate to potentially answer these questions. Some different experiments we could do might involve using different kind of mints, maybe hotter water and seeing if that tries, or maybe even colder water if you had a temp or a thermometer that permits that. Maybe different kinds of glasses, who knows, or longer time periods then we could investigate the different trends that go along with the minty water and the controlled water. Outside of this investigation though, as Riley was saying, there are so many factors that go into what changes the temperature of the water we have out, right? 
the study of this change in this kind of deal that we work with in chemistry here at Oregon State, we call it thermochemistry. And in thermochemistry, we talk a lot about specific heat capacity of different substances. So we have some really crazy units for these. Um, and the heat, we would measure it in joules. So not degrees, not in Fahrenheit, not in centigrade, but in joules, which is just a measure of energy. Water has a specific heat capacity of 4.18 joules per gram degree, centi degree centigrade, excuse me. So this means that for every gram of water, we need 4.18 joules to change its temperature by one degree Celsius. Now Celsius and Fahrenheit are just a little bit different. You can see that with any different conversion you do, but it does explain just how water's temperature changes. And the mints probably don't have any effect. They probably don't release any energy, which is why the water changes, the temperature of that water changes at a relatively even rate. Thank so you thank all you so much for coming. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, you're okay. No. Thank, thank you, you all so, so much for coming, coming, for taking in this experiment with us. If you're interested, try changing other things about your experiment. Like Al said, the temperature, maybe the glass of water you put it in. See if you can figure out what is changing the temperature of our water here. Thank you so much for your attention. We are so grateful you came.